How did you meet Papa G? <laughs> you know, I had had a profound awakening in 1972 when I was a federal fugitive. Mm -hmm. And I was living in the mountains in Colorado. I was being hunted. Mm, wow. And um, what'd you do? I jumped a policeman and freed a prisoner during May Days in 1971. Okay. And since it was in Washington, it was a federal offense. Okay. Well, because at that point, I'd given my life for freedom. Mm. What, and to me, it meant politics. And it started out with civil rights. It meant mm. that everybody can vote. Mm. You know. So that was the first time I had to put my life on the line. Was to face these Klansmen on horseback who were beating us because we believed in the right to vote. So I was now living underground with a federal fugitive thing, and I've been you know, dealing marijuana, and I got busted with that. And so I was looking at a lot of years in prison. I was looking at 18 years, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> living in a cabin in Colorado, I had guns and dynamite, and mm -hmm. was connected to the Black Panthers, and, and I was desperate. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so I called for help. I fasted for three days, and then I took uh, 500 micrograms of LSD, wow. two window panes, and I became overwhelmed with this paranoia that I'm going to die. But I thought, okay, if I'm going to die, I can use my death to call for help. Because if there's a God, and I didn't know if there's a God or not, but if there's a God, God must not know what's happening here. And maybe I could call for help. And so I experienced my death, and I woke up. And when I woke up, I was what I called outer space. Mm. There was nothing. It was completely empty, mm. completely still and so blissful and so certain this is what I am. I am immortal consciousness. I am immortal consciousness. Mm. And I realized all of history is to lead up to this realization. And if everybody could realize this, mm. the world's free. Wow. And so that became my mission. How do I pass this on? Wow. And so I went on a spiritual search. Mm. It took me 18 years to find Papaji. Wow. I mean, I started out going to Peru, looking for a hidden valley. Mm. And uh, I lived in the back mountains of Peru. I was the first gringo they'd ever seen. I rode my horse back into the uncharted areas of the Andes. I mean, mm. they'd never seen anything like me. Because first of all, I didn't even know what hippies were. Mm. And I was a hippie. I mean, I had mm. long hair and, you know, total... Okay. Yeah. You know. Okay. So after Peru, you you make your way to uh, oh, now. No. no Peru right. was 1972. Okay. I met Papaji in 1990. Okay. So it was a while Just after that. Five lifetimes later. Yeah. You know. Okay. I mean, you know, I after Peru, I set up a commune here in the Applegate. Yeah. And it was that was my attempt to pass it on by with LSD. It didn't work, really. I mean, it was good high. Okay. Everybody got their insights, but it really oh. didn't pass on this realization of the truth. Okay. And so then I had to find other ways to try to do it. Huh. Yeah. But we can go on for hours, man. You don't want my story. <laughs> I'll give you my memoir. It's all in okay. there. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's okay. I'd love to, to read that. <laughs> but eventually, yeah. I've had to find Papaji. Mm -hmm. By then, okay, so now it's 1989. Okay. I'm already, I'm a teacher. I'm teaching the Enneagram. I'm doing okay. clinical hypnosis certifications at Esalen and in Austria. Okay. I'm teaching around the world. I taught in the Zen temple in Japan. I was brought back there. Hmm. I had married to my best friend and partner. You still wanted more of something. I needed something more. Hmm. And so uh, I left it all and went searching for a teacher. Hmm. And everyone thought I was, it was, I was 43 years old. It was 1990. Hmm. Everyone said, you're having a midlife crisis. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> going off into India. You don't even know anybody. You don't know where you're going. Mm -hmm. You're just going to go head off to find your teacher. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I did. Huh. Wow. And he, and he pointed you the rest of the way. He, he didn't do anything. When I found him, they say, he's waiting for you. Go on yeah. up. Mm. That blew my mind. He couldn't be waiting for me because nobody knew I was coming. Mm. So I go up in this tiny little house, up this open courtyard, and he's in his bedroom. He's on his bed. There's a room for a chair and a bed, and a small bed. Yeah. And he's sitting on the bed, and he asks me to join him. So I sit on his bed with him. And he says, why are you here? I said, I'm ready. I'm ready to fully, finally wake up. And I looked at him, and it was over. It was over then? Yeah. 
He looked at me and I knew in that moment, for sure, I am looking at my own self. There's no one else here. I'm looking at my own self that sees me, loves me, and there was nothing else. And that was it. And I just fell in love, of course.